1940s was the heyday of unforgettable swing bands, led by Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, and Glenn Miller. And then there was the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra. Benny Goodman, when asked about the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra, replied, Who? The TST Orchestra was the product of a chance meeting between Bob Hoot Gibson and Doogie McLeod at the opening of the Grandy Ballroom in Detroit in August of 1929. Within a week of that meeting, they formed a partnership to invest all their money in the stock market. This partnership came to a screeching halt on October 29th, 1929, otherwise known as Black Tuesday. It would be another four years before the partnership would re-emerge as the TST Orchestra. Bob Hoot Gibson. Born at the dawn of the 20th century, Bob Hoot grew up in the Bush Park neighborhood in Detroit. His dreams were to become the first great American Impressionist painter. His father would have none of it and threw him out of the house when he was 17 years old. He continued his career as a painter, honing his craft on houses. When one disgruntled customer refused to pay up, Hoot painted an obscenity on the man's house and stole his guitar. And so, Hoot's musical career began. Doogie McLeod. As a boy, Doogie played cello in Detroit's Central High School Orchestra, but soon discovered his true passion was beer, drinking it and making it. Dropping out of school at 16 during Prohibition, Doogie joined the bootlegging industry in Detroit, eventually opening his own speakeasy. With the 1933 repeal of Prohibition, high-class establishments prospered, and Doogie's business closed. That was when Doogie took up bass playing full-time. Shortly thereafter, Hoot and Doogie founded the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra. The band endured some hard times and went through numerous drummers, horn players, and violinists throughout the mid-30s. But during 1939, through a series of fortuitous events, the seven-player orchestra finally secured a solid lineup of talented musicians. Benny Boom Boom Lakuda. As a toddler, Benny pounded on anything he could hit with his hands or a stick. In the spring of 1939, Benny grew tired of his childhood home in the circus in Baraboo, Wisconsin. There, Benny met the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra, an aspiring swing band that was barnstorming the upper Midwest on their way to California. Now, 16 years old, Benny was tired of cleaning up the elephant pens after the show. Benny jumped at the chance to join the TST Orchestra as their drummer. Jerry Knowlton. Jerry was brought up on a farm in rural Wisconsin. She sang in the bathtub, she sang in the barn, she sang at school, she sang in the church choir. Well, you get the idea. One Friday evening in the summer of 1939, Jerry borrowed her family's 1932 Ford truck and drove to the Riviera Ballroom in Lake Geneva. The Riviera was about the grandest place she'd ever seen. She stood in front of the bandstand where the TST Orchestra was playing the swing standards of the day. Jerry sang along with the band leader often breaking into harmony. Band leader Bob Hoot Gibson asked Jerry to join the band on stage. After the show, she was enlisted to join the band on their way to California. No one was sure if the 1932 truck ever made it back to the farm. John Samuel Hamilton III, Junior Junior as everyone called him, came from a distinguished New England family that had fallen onto hard times during the Depression. Junior Junior was the black sheep of the family, but managed through family connections to go to Connecticut College, where he majored in drinking, playing piano, and gambling. Expelled in 1938, he moved to Las Vegas, which was prospering due to the recent completion of the Hoover Dam. Las Vegas had legalized gambling to take advantage of the construction workers with money in their pockets and time on their hands. In the fall of 1939, Junior Junior found himself in a poker game with Bob Hoot Gibson, who was en route to California with the TST Orchestra. By going all in and calling Junior's bluff, who took all of Hamilton's money and his marker. Junior Junior had no choice but to join the band to work off his debt. Wendy Lynn Stats. Wendy Lynn was a child of the Depression in Ojai, California. Wendy Lynn, the oldest of three children, and her mother were abandoned by her father. Wendy Lynn had a natural talent for singing and tap dancing which she acquired by sneaking into Shirley Temple movie matinees. Wendy Lynn started singing and tap dancing with a collection box outside the bakery where her mother worked. 
After contributing to the family income, Wendy Lynn eventually scraped together enough money to get a tattered violin at the local pawn shop next door. By 1936, Wendy Lynn was 16, eight years older than Shirley Temple, and her act was starting to get stale. Wendy Lynn took her meager savings and moved to L.A. There, she waited tables in the Columbia Studio Commissary and even landed a spot in the chorus line of a couple of masterpiece studio films. When the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra arrived in L.A. in December of 1939, Bob Hoot Gibson sneaked into the Columbia Pictures lot by dressing in a tuxedo to get a cheap meal in the commissary. There he heard Wendy Lynn humming a Glenn Miller tune in perfect pitch. He invited her to join the band on the spot. Ready for a big break? Wendy Lynn accepted. Last Chance Stein Last Chance was the clarinet player and enforcer for the Music Defense League in Los Angeles, which became known as AFM Local 47 in 1940. The new AFM worked out a deal to help musicians who continued to lose live performances due to the growth of LP records. Ironically, Last Chance couldn't find steady work in a band, but managed to carve out a niche as a session player. The TST Orchestra hired Stein as a soloist on their first and only recording session in California. With a solid lineup in place, the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra scraped together enough money for an hour of studio time. They recorded You're Gonna Do in the summer of 1940 on a wax master at Quintessential Records in Huntington Park, California. They only pressed 100 demo copies on the Quintessential label, a vanity imprint. The song was released in the fall of 1940 to almost no reviews. It is rumored that Bing Crosby called it the best song I've heard in the last five minutes. By the winter of 1941, the song had peaked without so much as a mention in Billboard magazine. Somehow the song reached the ears of noted B-movie director Klaus von Petrus, who presented the TST Orchestra with their first big break, the opportunity to be featured in his next movie. Originally titled The Swing Set, the movie was about an up-and-coming swing band. In fact, von Petrus was so enamored of the TST Orchestra song, he changed the title of the movie to You're Gonna Do. The movie's dance scenes began filming on December 3rd in a high school gymnasium in Burbank. Once in the can, the daily rushes were sent to the cutting room at Masterpiece Studio in Van Nuys. On December 7th, 1941, tragedy struck. Masterpiece Studio burned to the ground when a serial arsonist set fire to a Kellogg's warehouse next door. The film from the ballroom shoot was presumed lost in the blaze. That is, until 1970, when a film canister turned up at an estate sale in the rundown Van Nuys home of Masterpiece Studio janitor Dusty Hall. The following film clips have the original remastered soundtrack, but the dialogue, fortunately, was never dubbed. The color that you see, I see. nobody is proud of.
Masterpiece Studio Fire, the tent show Troubadours Orchestra, lost their movie gig. Bitterly disappointed, the band broke up and went their separate ways. Doogie McLeod. Doogie gave up the bass and bought a dive bar in Wyowego, Wisconsin. Five years later, Doogie died when he was hit by a half barrel of Schlitz as it fell off a beer truck. Doogie's bass guitar still hangs on the wall behind the bar. Benny Boom Boom Lakuda. Benny had just turned 17 when the tent show Troubadours Orchestra broke up. He retreated to a one-room tenement apartment in Chicago to prepare for upcoming auditions where he was arrested for disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest due to his habit of playing the drums at all hours of the day and night. The judge gave Benny a choice, 30 days in jail and a $100 fine, or he could join the army. Not having $100, Benny joined the Army. Due to Benny's size 13 flat feet, the Army assigned him to the USO band. Benny sat out his tour of duty behind the kit and behind the front lines. Benny made his career as a USO drummer, doing tours in both Korea and Vietnam. In 1969, Benny was hit by sniper fire while making a visit to the Camp Latrine. John Samuel Hamilton III and Jerry Knowlton by 1942, Junior Junior and Jerry Knowlton had fallen in love and were married on June 21st. Inspired by the 1939 film, The Wizard of Oz, the gala reception was to be capped off with a hot air balloon ride for the bride and groom. As the festivities were winding down, Junior Junior went to find the balloon pilot who disappeared after having too much to drink. When Junior Junior leaned over the balloon basket to see if the pilot was there, he caught his leg on the tether rope, pulling it loose as he fell into the basket. As the balloon floated away, Junior Junior's cry disappeared with him into the evening sky, never to be heard again. After many years of searching far and wide for Junior Junior, Jerry Hamilton was so heartbroken, she entered a Dominican convent where she attained a certain renown for her singing as Sister Mary Geraldine. Wendy Lynn Stats. When the Tent Show Troubadours Orchestra disbanded, Wendy Lynn found her way into radio soap operas. She married a returning soldier in 1946 and moved to Oxnard. The advent of television ended her full-time show business career and she settled into her new role as a dutiful housewife. She did continue to do occasional jingles for radio commercials. She considered Give Your Tootsie a Tootsie her masterpiece. Last Chance Stein. After World War II, the demand for clarinet session players diminished. So Last Chance switched to saxophone and can be heard on several early rock and roll records, including Eddie Cochran's obscure singles on Echo Records. On June 21st, 1966, Stein was at the sound check as a sideman for Jackie DeShannon, who was one of the openers for the Rolling Stones, when he slipped off the stage at the Hollywood Bowl and hit his head on the concrete below. He died in the ambulance on the way to Cedar sinai Hospital. Bob Hoot Gibson. After the tent show Troubadours Orchestra broke up, 
who'd struggled to put together another swing band. Many of the good young musicians were off fighting World War II. Jazz soon turned to bebop, but Hoot had not. So he sold his guitar and few earthly possessions to buy a modest cottage near the shores of Lake Michigan in Bailey's Harbor, Wisconsin. It was there that he returned to the craft of painting, houses. He died in 1987 of complications after being bedridden for some time with a bad case of parrot feet from working so many years on a ladder. While the Ten Show Troubadours Orchestra never became a household name, there were a few fans of Swing Jazz Obscura who can recite the chorus of You're gonna do, you're gonna do, you're gonna do just what you do.